The Earth is home to roughly 7 billion people with diverse cultures and languages. But despite our differences, we are all linked by business. We all eat, shop, and dream of owning something. And most of us work. All businesses must have supervisors to function. Supervisors oversee the work of others to accomplish the objectives of the business. They represent both management to the workers and the workers to management. Welcome to Supervision. I'm Jimmy Allen and I'll be your guide through this supervision class. Welcome to Supervision, Lesson 1, Creating a Winning Mindset. In traditional organizations, the manager was seen as a boss, given all of the authority and providing all of the answers. Early managers were like military commanders, those who gave orders, demoting those who did not carry them out, and rewarding those who did. By contrast, today's manager requires skills appropriate for a new organizational complexity. The new manager is faced with advanced technology, which requires complex and speedy ways of communicating information, providing guidance, implementing plans, and coordinating employees and resources so that organizational goals can be met. Today's managers work in a dynamic environment and must anticipate and adapt to challenges. The modern manager is a coach instead of a boss. Just like a sports coach, the supervisor creates a winning mindset by coaching employees of the organization to develop teamwork, which effectively fulfills their needs and achieves organizational objectives. The traditional autocratic organization with its hierarchical system of management and an overbearing boss that forces performance out of people is no longer needed. The modern supervisor provides an atmosphere of empowerment by letting employees make decisions and inspiring people to boost productivity. Instead of issuing orders, the modern supervisor calls in employees, explains the situation, and asks, how do we handle it best? What are your ideas? Employees are treated as professionals who know their job. Supervisors get work done through others and with resources. They do this by using the functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Planning is looking forward. It's deciding what needs to be done. Organizing is gathering and allocating the resources necessary to accomplish the plan. Directing is influencing people toward the accomplishment of goals. Controlling is looking back, comparing the plan to what has actually happened, then taking the necessary action. All managers plan, organize, lead, and control, but how they do so will differ. The differences in what a supervisor does versus what the top manager of a company does are a matter of degree and emphasis, not of function. The extent to which managers perform the functions of management, planning, organizing, directing, and controlling varies by level in the management hierarchy. The term supervisor the one who directs the work of others should be applied at all management levels of the organization. In common usage, however, the title of supervisor tends to be used only in the first level of the management hierarchy. 
If an organization were divided into top, middle, and lower managerial levels, the term generally applies to the lowest level. All managers in an organization, regardless of the level, use all four management functions in their jobs. Top managers, however, spend more time on planning and organizing, while supervisors spend more time on directing and controlling activities. Middle managers spend more time on organizing and directing. Professor Henry Mensberg identified 10 roles common to the work of all managers. A role is a set of organized behaviors. Managers assume 10 roles divided into three groups, interpersonal, informational, and decisional. Interpersonal roles, figurehead, leader, and liaison provide information. In the figurehead role, the manager represents the organization in all matters of formality. The top-level manager represents the company legally and socially to those outside of the organization. The supervisor represents the work group to higher management and higher management to the work group. In the liaison role, the manager interacts with peers and people outside the organization. The top-level manager uses the liaison role to gain favors and information, while the supervisor uses it to maintain the routine flow of work. The leader role defines the relationships between the manager and employees. Informational roles, monitor, disseminator, and spokesperson process information. In the monitor role, the manager receives and collects information. In the role of disseminator, the manager transmits special information into the organization. The top level manager receives and transmits more information from people outside the organization than the supervisor. In the role of spokesperson, the manager disseminates the organization's information into its environment. Thus, the top-level manager is seen as an industry expert, while the supervisor is seen as a unit or departmental expert. Decisional roles, entrepreneur, disturbance handler, resource allocator, and negotiator use information. In the entrepreneurial role, the manager initiates change. In the disturbance handler role, the manager deals with threats to the organization. In the resource allocator role, the manager chooses where the organization will expend its efforts. In the negotiator role, the manager negotiates on behalf of the organization. The top-level manager makes the decisions about the organization as a whole, while the supervisor makes the decisions about his or her particular work unit. Managers accomplish the functions of management through their roles. In the planning and organizing functions, the manager performs the decisional role of resource allocator. In the staffing function, the manager performs the interpersonal leadership role by providing employees with feedback on performance. In the leading function, the manager performs the disseminator, entrepreneur, and disturbance handler roles. In the controlling function, the manager performs the monitor role. The following scenario may seem old, but the information is still relevant today. Use it to model your own philosophy of management. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, which role you play as supervisor is really up to you. I'm afraid I can't buy that. In my company, the supervisor is going to be the man in the middle, whether he wants to be or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if a person really didn't like that role, and who would? She could always leave. <laughs> I'm talking about a person who's going to stay with my company. But they do have that choice. 
that's a good point, Bill. It obviously doesn't change things in the company, but it could make a difference in the life of the supervisor. It might make a difference in the company if enough supervisors left. Sure. <laughs> well, you could be right, but there are other ways of changing the role of the supervisor besides leaving the company. That's the part I don't see. If a company has built up over the years the way they want supervisors to act, how can anyone change that? Well, it, it doesn't change overnight, but each supervisor has the potential of making things different. That's part of the challenge of supervision. The Keystone View, identified by Professor Keith Davis, is many people's ideal of a supervisor's job. The comparison between an archway and an organization is very interesting. Without the Keystone, supervisor, the arch, organization, collapses. The Keystone is the central topmost stone of an arch. It is an essential part because it takes the pressure of both sides, exerts pressure of its own, and uses them to strengthen the overall arch. The Keystone Supervisor is the main connector joining upper management and employee workers making it possible for each to perform effectively. Supervisors are the level of management linking the operations of each department to the rest of the organization. This view underscores the critical importance of developing people at all levels. One of the benefits in understanding the Keystone role is that it can help a supervisor in setting an ideal for self. It means you have to decide how you want your role to be viewed. Then, you'll want to follow up with what you can do to promote that ideal and make it a reality. Once goals are firmly set, ideals have the basic power themselves to influence the course of events leading to their attainment. Supervisors need conceptual, human, and technical skills. Top managers develop the organization strategy. They need conceptual skills to see the whole and how the parts relate to one another in order to come up with the company's vision and mission. Supervisors need technical skills, knowledge of, and the ability to use specialized processes. They are the only level of management to manage employees who do the technical work of the organization. All levels of management need human skills, the ability to interact and communicate effectively with other persons. You saw in this lesson of creating a winning mindset that every supervisor must decide the kind of supervisor he or she wants to be. You have to decide how you want your role to be viewed. If you see yourself as the keystone, you'll want to follow up with what you can do to promote that ideal and make it reality. Not every supervisor takes a class in management. But by taking this class, you will know what it takes to be an effective manager. With this lesson, we've shown you creating a winning mindset. Try to relate what you read and discuss to your own real experiences at work, in the classroom, on the athletic field, and at home. Coming up in the second lesson, we'll start studying planning. This has been Supervision Lesson 1, Creating a Winning Mindset. I'm Jimmy Allen, and I look forward to guiding you each step of the way as you determine your own philosophy of management.